What's going on? This is the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Sabetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and we are in the Detroit studio with Peter Vanderkay. How's it going, Ferris? I'm good. What's going, what's going on with you? Not much, not much. Just, uh, you know, regular old stuff. It's Friday. It's Friday. Happy Friday! Unless you're catching this on another day, but <laughs> any day that ends in Y, we're, we're happy. So, uh, let's, uh, let's dive right into it. So, Michigan native, That's born right. and raised, and talk to us about your early swimming career and just walk us through it. Yeah, so I started swimming really young. I was seven. I was not any good when I started. And, uh, you know, I, I like the sport for a lot of reasons that people like the sport when they're a kid. You know, it's a social event. It's having fun. It's splashing around in the water. As I got older, that kind of changed and it became more competitive for me personally. But, uh, you know, that's how I started. and. Eventually one goal, you know, leads to another goal and another goal and the next thing I know I find myself at U of M and then at the Olympics and winning some medals. So uh, it was a great progression for me through the sport from going from a kid that didn't care about swimming at all to mm -hmm. winning a gold medal. So wow. great experience. That's awesome. Uh, so you basically summarized like a 20 minute, 20 year career in like 30, <laughs> in 30 seconds. So maybe like let's, let's unfold that a little bit. Um, like talk about maybe high school swimming. So did you think when you were in high school that you would go on to do it internationally or what were you, what was your um, thought process early on? Yeah, so, you know, swimming in high school, I, I wasn't even sure at that point if I was going to swim in college. Mm. You know, going beyond that is just kind of playing it year by year. And uh, I kind of accelerated through the sport during that time period because I started off not even making the high school state meet my freshman year to mm setting a state record my senior year and, and at that point you know I knew I was going to keep going and, and try and get to the top but uh, you know it was still a, very much a social thing for me and just about having fun and uh, you know I tried to keep that going throughout my whole career just have fun with it uh, but yeah it's high school swimming was a, it was a great experience being on that team and being part of a team I think was so special uh, it really made it a lot more exciting than just you know, going and working out and, mm -hmm. and not having that experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then after high school, competed at the University of Michigan. So what was it like, um, you know, from the high school team to the college team? What was that experience like? It, it was, uh, I mean, it was similar. It's just a little bit more amplified at the co college level. You know, you go from being one of the better guys on the high school team or the best guy in the high school team to kind of lower ranks on the totem pole at mm -hmm. U of M. So, uh, you know, I had to kind of restart and, and climb my way up to the top there as well. And, uh, you know, practices were a lot different too. It, you go to, uh, you know, at Michigan, I was racing some of the best people every single day, mm, and so, workout, yeah. uh, you know, it wasn't I was winning stuff like I like I was, you know, my senior year of high school. So it's kind mm. of a, a reset wake yeah, up call yeah. for me. <laughs> humbling experience with, with yeah, the best. Yeah, very humbling. And um, like, do you have any favorite sets or types of workouts or things and that you really enjoyed or didn't enjoy? <laughs> so. You know, looking back, I, I actually liked some of the test sets that we did because uh -huh. it was a challenge and I was more of a middle distance, distance guy. So training wise, I was usually in the distance lane. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do things like 10 300s to send one to three and hold best average or 3100s best average or, uh, you know, a, a time 3000 was kind of our threshold set Woo. to determine what that, that threshold pace was going to be mm -hmm. for our training. And we do that every, you know, six weeks or so at Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't mind that that said I always looked at it as a challenge and mm -hmm. I wanted to see where I could benchmark myself. Uh, I know that's kind of nutty because a lot of people would say that's like the least. <laughs> the 3,000, no. The, like the, the practice I dread. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I like those kind of challenging sets and mm -hmm. I'd say the, the ones that I didn't like I think were backstroke. Backstroke and just straight up stroke? I am Terrible or backstroke? Terrible backstroke, yeah. Well, I, I actually liked I am, but the uh -huh. backstroke leg was always the toughest. Oh, backstroke. For me. Myself, I don't like backstroke. So you touched on it, the test set. Maybe um, for people watching, like if they're not familiar with what that, like what that is, or why you would do it, and you touched on it a little bit, maybe kind of go into that a little bit. Yeah. So at Michigan, we would do a, a time three thousand, and basically whatever pace you could hold at that was your threshold pace, and mm -hmm. then uh, you know they kind of uh, had a system where you could extrapolate threshold plus X mm -hmm. was, you know, and, and it was color coded. So yep. white pace was our threshold. And then, you know, it went white, pink, red, blue, purple. Uh, I think black meant you were totally done and your heart wasn't beating anymore. <laughs> uh, never got to that, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we would use that color system to 
through different uh, you know different uh, pace mm -hmm. in practice. Cool. And then after college, you continued to compete on an international level. Um, actually, well, well, you competed internationally while still in college, correct? So I guess balancing that, what was that like? Uh, it was great. I, I actually liked, I, I think, being on the college team more. It just felt like more of a team. And mm -hmm. the professional side is great, too. It's just a little bit different. You're kind of on your own. And mm -hmm. uh, the only time I was on a relay was for Team USA, which was awesome. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, was, you didn't have those dual meets and the, the points and... It's like, you know, really a feeling on a day-to-day -day basis that you were a part of something bigger than yourself, like a team. So mm -hmm. uh, both are, were great experiences, just a little bit different. I, I think I have some pretty fond memories of being on the college team just because, uh, again, it was a social thing. My classmates, a lot mm -hmm. of my good buddies were on the team and, yeah, yeah. you know, we're kind of in that grind day in, day out. So, mm -hmm. What are some of your best memories, whether it was in college or post-college uh, post life, team? competing, meets, travel, what were some things that stood out to you? Well, the, I think the travel definitely stands out. I mean, I, I was very fortunate and blessed to be able to travel to a lot of different places around the world. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, I didn't always get to see things, mm -hmm. you know, outside of the yeah. pool, the hotel, and the bus ride in airport, between, but yeah. yeah, the airport, uh, always fun, but, uh, you know, it's just to be able to go see different cultures and try different food and meet other swimmers from around the world, world is really, it yeah. was awesome. Cool. And you went to a number of world championships and Olympics. Which which ones stood out? Whether it was the city, your performance at it. Yeah. So I think London, I was my favorite, just from a overall standpoint. Mm -hmm. They were all great experiences. Yeah. Um, and each one was a little bit different. I think you know by the time I got to London, I was a lot more seasoned. I knew what to expect. They did a great job with the games too. Mm -hmm. uh, Beijing was where I swam great. Mm -hmm. uh, very different experience. I mean, culture, food, everything oh, yeah. was was very different from the U.S. Um, and they really did a great job with all the venues and the, mm -hmm. the pomp and circumstance of having it in China and Asia. Yeah, uh, you know, just incredible. And then when I was twenty, I was just kind of like, you know, <laughs> why die? Like, what what, I, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was great. I, I had a great time. I was just trying to soak it in because. You know, the first one, you're like, I don't know if I'll ever come back here. Yeah. You just wow. got to enjoy it. So. Uh huh. Cool. And then, so I guess uh, wrapping up your career, when you look back at it, you know, what advice do you have for people who are trying to get to the next level? Maybe it's not the Olympics. Maybe it is. And they're just trying to get better. What advice? I mean, it's a blanket statement, but anything you could share, tidbits. Yeah, so I, I already kind of touched on, I think, my biggest piece of advice, which is I always have fun with it. Like, it should be fun. It's a sport. Uh, you don't want to look at it like a job or a burden, so mm -hmm. have fun and, and yeah. make sure you're having fun with the people around you. Mm -hmm. um, I always believe that if you're enjoying it, you're going to swim a lot faster than yeah. if you dread it. Definitely. So just you know, embrace the challenge and, and make it fun. Find a way to make it fun, um, and I think that's really important. And then just try your best. I mean, that's all you can really do. Enjoy mm -hmm. it and you know, try and improve, work on the little things day to day, and good things will happen. Yeah, awesome. And then, so past... Uh, the the competitive swimming world. What have you found yourself getting? Like, what are you up to these days? So these days, I work in commercial real estate brokerage, which is a a, a big difference from being in the pool every day. But yeah. it's still a challenge, and it's like swimming in a sense that whatever you put in, you, you kind of get out. It's mm -hmm. it's how hard you work and focus on the details. So mm -hmm. I can relate to that. It's a it was a good transition for me. Nice. And then um, you know we're both a member of the Detroit Swims Committee. So talk about Detroit Swims. I guess you've been involved longer than I have, so talk us through what that is and how you're involved. Yeah, so Detroit Swims is a program through the YMCA here in Detroit, in Metro Detroit now. Uh, we're trying to expand it, but basically uh, it's a learn to swim program for kids in the city and, and might, you know, kids that might otherwise not have a chance to learn to swim. Um, and, you know, and I know you feel the same way. Uh, learning to swim should not be a privilege, it should be a right. Mm -hmm. We live in Michigan here and you know, the Great Lakes and, and all the waterways and pools and hot summers we have. Uh, and I can't imagine growing up and not being able to jump in a pool or jump in the lake and, and splash around and have fun. So uh, we're really working to eradicate that problem uh, because it is generational. If your parents don't teach you to swim mm -hmm. and you never learn, you're never going to be able to teach your kids. And that's mm -hmm. how I learned. My parents taught me. So, uh, you know, if we can get everybody to learn, then everybody can teach everybody and we won't have this problem anymore. Yeah, yeah, of course. Super important. Teach people how to swim, learn to swim. Um, do you find yourself swimming still? 
you know, I do, but not nearly as much as I used to. I mean, uh-huh. uh, I know you can relate to this. I mean, when you're training on a college team, you're, you know, 10 practices a week, two hours of practice. Yeah. And <laughs> now I'm like uh, one, maybe one session a week for like 3,000 yards. Uh-huh. Which uh, 3,000 is no yeah, 3,000. That's, that's I, solid. I, I feel pretty good about it now <laughs> yeah, when I get I mean, 3,000. I used to, you know, rejoice when the practice was only 3,000 <laughs> back when I was training. That was like the extreme taper workout. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> 3,000 3, a week, or maybe if it's two, it's 6,000 a week, maybe. So, what were you doing at your peak in training? So, uh, leading up to 2012, I was probably doing at least 80,000 a week. 80,000 a week. Yeah. Like, Mike's reaction is like, what? Yeah, 70, 80,000. Yeah, no problem. I think most of my career, I was probably between, you know, 60 and 80,000, uh-huh. depending and then, on what we were working on. Yeah, yeah. And so you were 80K at the peak, maybe. And then how much do you take, how much would you taper off? Like, at your, before London uh, or Beijing, the two weeks before, how much were you doing? So we kind of slow roll it down. And as I got older and stronger, I could, I could taper for longer. Than mm-hmm. you know, I could as a 16 year old. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I would get down to you know two, three thousand, kind of leading up to the meet, and then right before the meet, you know, basically just became a warm up. Mm-hmm. You know, really just trying to rest and, and fine tune everything. Uh, I'd say overall that process where you're really kind of br- going down from 8,000 meters to two to three thousand was you know two three weeks but and you feel good you're going oh, it felt great <laughs> so I, it's not like I was doing three thousand for a long time you know? yeah. it's like one week out of the year right right <laughs> and then uh, you mentioned something that's interesting you're getting stronger and then you kind of modifying how much taper you would do so a lot of people in the master swimming community um, you know they're getting older they're tweaking how much they're doing in the water out of the water what what did you learn about I guess yourself in the sport as you went for like Olympic quad basically uh, how, how do you learn and tweak those things well, I think it's all it's all uh, something you have to learn and you have to kind of learn through experience uh, you know I had meets where I probably overrested and, and some where I underrested I think I underrested for Olympic trials in 2012 and mm. I mean it was one of those meets where you go in and just feel absolutely terrible mm. and I just had to grind it out and luckily I was able to get on the team in the 400. Um, and then, you know, three weeks later, I finally caught up and, and mm. felt regenerated a little bit better and, and dropped three seconds and it felt a lot better. So, yeah, yeah, rest, uh, rest. You know, you really just have to listen to your body and, and understand mm-hmm. what you need. And, uh, you know, part of that, I think, is just believing in yourself. Mm-hmm. And believing in yourself, so the mental side, right? So, physical, obviously, you got to put in the work and then taper and then rest. But how, how important is mental preparation and that whole side of it? Uh, I'd say it's equally as important. I mean, you have to, like I said, believe in yourself, you have to stay positive, and you have to visualize doing well in your race. I mean, I, t- I tell that to kids when I'm working with them all the time, if you can't see yourself winning and going that goal time, you're putting yourself at a big disadvantage because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, good things happen to people who have positive thoughts, and if you've done the work, there's no reason not to be positive. Yeah, and you talked about goal setting, so maybe let's get into that a little bit. I guess the importance of goal setting and what what makes a good goal? I I see I see a lot of you know people from our community. They'll message and they'll say, "I'm trying to win this," or "I'm trying to do X Y Z," and they're sort of fluffy. So I guess what? How do you you know the importance of goal setting and what advice you have to set good goals? Yeah, so goal setting is super important, especially when you're training for something and you have a legitimate goal, like you know going a time or getting a place at a competition. Yep. yep. Uh, you know the the process between setting that goal and getting there is. Uh, you know, there's steps involved, so you have mm-hmm. to really break it down and, and say, is this realistic? It's okay to be unrealistic with the goal as, as long as you're not just so far out there. Mm-hmm. You got to push yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's okay to, to not achieve that goal and just underachieve a little bit because it means you, you almost got there and you probably mm-hmm. did a great job. Yeah. Uh, so setting realistic goals, but also setting long term and short term goals. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a good example of a long term goal would be, you know, I want to break. X time mm-hmm. at the end of the season. Yep. Well, you, you need some shorter term goals to, to get there. So, uh, you know, and those short term goals can be I want to go to X number of practices this week, mm. um, or I want to, you know, be at this point in the season at this point. And if I'm on track, that means I'm on track if I get there. Uh, but, or, or, you know, I want to do X number of repeats on this set on this day in practice. That's a, a great goal for mm. an everyday goal. Um, yeah. And if you don't 
make that goal, it doesn't mean you're not going to meet your goal at the end of the season. Yeah, you can check and refine. Right. What, um, do you see a lot of those skills transferring out of the water, whether it's goal setting or anything that we oh, talked about? Absolutely. I think you know that's something that is great about sports and swimming in general is very goal oriented. Um, so that you know you can take that process and apply it to anything else in your life, whether it's you know playing a musical instrument or your work or your relationships or I mean, really anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that process is super important. Yeah, and I guess working with a coach maybe, like what what value is it to have a coach and what are some of the things that you've benefited from having, or maybe give some shout outs to some coaches you worked with. Yeah, so I mean, coaches are great. You know, it's a, a, somebody can look at you and, and be objective and say, you're, you know, you're not doing this very well. Mm. You need to know this. And that Hold doesn't- you accountable. <laughs> yeah, the accountability portion of it. You know, if, if you don't have anyone watching you, it, it's easy to, to get caught up in your own thoughts and think you're doing a great job when maybe you aren't, or it could be the other way around. You're doing a great job and you're being super hard on yourself. So another set of eyes and ears is, is a great tool to getting better. And uh, I mean, I, I remember having conversations with Greg Troy uh, when I was swimming for him down in Florida and mm. uh, leading up to 2012 in the Olympics. We had a very honest relationship and, you know, I'd, I'd swim a race at a Grand Prix or something mm -hmm. and, you know, he might come up to me and say, you know what, that was total garbage. And I, I you know, <laughs> what do I say? I, I agree with you. I, I did, that wasn't a very good race, but why wasn't it a good race? Mm, it's like not, it. you know, he's not, I'm not taking it personally, it's constructive mm -hmm. criticism. Yeah, so sure. what can we do better so that that doesn't happen again? And that's the only way you can improve. Mm -hmm accountability for sure um, and then so my swim pro we we have you know the coaching application I guess what value do you see in the swimming community of having some kind of a virtual coach community type of thing well again I, I think it's it's a way to hold yourself accountable to get feedback uh, you know to understand things that you could be doing better or, or things that you're doing really good uh, that you know you you can take and run from there so uh, having a coach is so important. I just, I, I couldn't do it without one. Definitely, definitely. And members of our community uh, rely on the coach. <laughs> to oh, yeah. Get workouts and training plans and, and all sorts of good stuff. Um, cool. Mike, do we have any questions from the live? Yeah, uh, we had a question earlier. I think when you were talking about how much you were swimming, they said, <laughs> uh, how do you swim that distance and not get tired? <laughs> yeah. So, how do you, how, I mean, really, how do you maintain form when you're doing 80,000? in a week <laughs> well I, I didn't always do it and and that's part of the process I mean uh, 80,000 a week was challenging and that was the goal if I wasn't pushing myself you know how am I gonna get better and, and improve so you know some weeks we would really you know crank out the yards and then maybe we dial it back a little bit mm -hmm. but uh, I was tired I mean there that's the honest truth and and sometimes you have to learn how to fight through that that tired phase to to improve so uh, it's a good question. It's an honest answer. Uh, nobody who, who swims that much feels great all the time. I, I, so I have a follow-up. So the why. So why did you swim a lot? And then why did you go down a th is it? I mean, for people who are not as familiar with how you train. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, swimming, I swim everything from the 200 free up to the mile. Right. Um, and swimming, I think, is just a sport where you have to spend a lot of time in the water to mm. get that exposure and, and to work yeah. those muscles. I mean, as as humans, we're walking around, so if you're running, you know, you're still getting a little bit of... Some uh, muscle activity. Yeah, some <laughs> of the, the same muscle groups as you're walking around. Uh, in swimming, you're not doing that motion anywhere At all, right. but the pool, really, so For sure. that's the only way you can do it. I like it. We had another, uh, so what level is the My Swim Pro app training you for? Are, do you need to be an Olympian to use this app? <laughs> Maybe I'll answer that and you can touch on it. So uh, for sure you don't have to be an Olympian to use the application. So the training programs are really designed for, I'd say more beginner swimmers, working up to advanced, but not advanced at the Olympic level because if you're someone like Peter, you had a coach, you're training with someone, some group, right? So you wouldn't really need our application. But if you're looking to, you know, swim your first triathlon, or maybe you're looking to find more structure swimming three times per week for 1,500 meters, the training programs and the workouts are really designed for that type of swimmer. Um, one of the training plans that's the most popular is called the, the six-week get fit program. And with that plan, you go from 
uh, pretty, pretty beginner where you're only doing a few hundred meters in the first workout and you work your way up to doing a 1500 continuously at the end of six weeks. So that's the most popular plan. It's really designed for beginners. And I think at the earliest stage in your swimming journey, uh, technique is super important. So you have to learn the fundamentals and all those training plans uh, work, you, work your technique. I guess any comments on the importance of technique? Oh, technique is paramount. I mean, and, and the more you can focus on it early, the better off you're going to be. Because mm -hmm. uh, building good habits right out of the gate is, is so important. Bad habits, as we all know, are, are tough to break. And mm -hmm. uh, so if you can just avoid those in the first place, you're off to a better start. Excellent, excellent. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, so um, I'll, maybe I'll put these in the same one. Uh, what's your favorite stroke and why do you like swimming so much? So my favorite stroke is freestyle, probably just because it's my best stroke. There we go. <laughs> um, it was the easiest stroke for me, and it was, you know, the the, the only distance stroke really. Uh -huh. um, and what was the second half of the question? Why do you like swimming? Why so do I like swimming? Um, <laughs> you know, I always just like being in the water. Um, not every morning at 5 a.m., but uh, you know, it's a it's a great sport where it's low impact. You can do it your whole life. Um, a lot of my friends were in the sport, great people in the sport, it's a good community. Um, I think all those together and, and just kind of like the like we were talking about earlier with the goals, mm -hmm. it's a very goal-oriented, time-oriented, place-oriented sport and it's just something that kind of clicked with me. Awesome. Any other questions in the Q&A live? Um, if you were not a swimmer, what would you do? What uh, would you be or do? Well, I guess, uh, so you already kind of transitioned out of it, but maybe um, if you were going to be maybe a professional athlete of some sport, but not swimming, what would you do? <laughs> it's a it's a tough question. I, you know, question. <laughs> I like playing a lot of different sports, but uh, I don't know you know where that would have went if I had dropped swimming early and, mm. and done other sports. I I played tennis. I always liked tennis, but there we go. Uh, definitely wasn't as good. It wasn't uh, as natural for me. Mm. Um, I like hockey a lot, but I never played ice hockey, you know, competitively. Ah, so. so you'd be an ice hockey player and a tennis player. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who maybe. knows? So we'll you never know. Machine. I like it. Uh, anything else? We, we good? We wrap it. We'll start to wrap it up. Cool. Um, so I have some swag with me. That's, nice. Uh, that's good. So how, how does someone maybe obtain said swag? Yeah. How, how would you get something like this? All right. So I'll, I'll talk, walk us through. So. Uh, Peter's holding a My Swim Pro silicone swim cap, super legit. And then this is a My Swim Pro t-shirt. And actually, this model on the back it says "swim" in sixty different languages. So I don't. I mean, what do you oh, think awesome. in high school? What 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 language? Uh, Spanish. All right, we got Spanish uh, somewhere on there, but we have you know all the languages, the big ones, and more. Um, and you can get all this cool swag by investing in my swim pro. So I'll really quick talk about that and then we'll wrap it up. So uh, we've had a lot of success growing the business and helping more swimmers all over the world, but there's an opportunity to help even more people. And so part of our expansion is uh, raising some outside capital, but the way we wanna take in this capital is by inviting the community and all the people watching and all of the people in the swimming space to be a part of that journey. And by, you can do that by investing directly in the company. So we're, we're doing this for a very short period of time. We did it in 2017. So we had in 2017, we had 137 uh, investors from all over the world who invested in the business. We're opening up that campaign again by popular demand. And so you can invest in the business. If you invest uh, at $500, that's the minimum. And then at different investment levels above that, you start to unlock some cool swag like the swim cap, the bag tag, we have a cool quarter zip, uh, a triathlon jersey, and you can even get the My Swim Pro subscription for free for life, which is pretty cool, and that's the only time you can really be a part of that. So if you want some cool swag, uh, check out uh, our link to invest, and the link is pretty simple, we'll put it in the description of this video. It's wefunder.com forward slash my swim pro so we'll put that in the description you can invest up until March 31st 2019 um, so hopefully you watch this video before that uh, otherwise you can check out our campaign page and see how much money we raise from the community but really this is about uh, empowering people around the world to lead happier and healthier lives through the sport of swimming I guess if you were to give a pitch of like why someone would want to support what we're doing my swim pro I guess what kind of what, what would you say about that 
So I'd say, I mean, it's like I was talking about a, a love for the sport. It's a sport you can do uh, from the moment you learn it to um, almost when you're, you're done on this earth. I mean, it's, I, I see people in their 80s and 90s still swimming. Uh, so it's a great life skill. Um, it's something you can use on vacation. It's something you can use to stay healthy. Um, it's a great physical fitness uh, tool. And uh, I, I think what you guys are doing and creating a, you know, a path for people to learn and improve on that it's just incredible, and if you can invest in that opportunity, it, it's even better. Awesome. Well, you heard it from the man, the myth, the legend, Peter <laughs> Vanderkay, here in the Detroit studio. Uh, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us in My the studio. My pleasure. Awesome. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Ask a Swim Pro Show. Later.